Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell and then come back and check out some of the other content on my channel. It is Sunday, July the 2nd. Our devotions are coming from Joyce Meyer's book called Trusting God Day by Day. And our devotion today is entitled, You Don't Have to Fear. Our scripture is from the book of Job, chapter 3, verse 25. For the thing which I greatly fear comes upon me, and that of which I am afraid befalls me. Let's hear how Joyce gets into this. Take a look at the verse above from the book of Job. I don't think this scripture means that every time you have a fearful thought in your mind, the thing you fear is going to happen. But if you get a great fear in your life and it's something you meditate on over and over and over again, you begin to speak it. You are putting yourself in danger of opening a door to have that thing in your life. Not just you, but me too. We need to be very careful about what our thoughts and our words, hang on. We need to be very careful about our thoughts and our words, and we need to keep our minds set in the right direction. I hate it when I get off and I read it in the wrong tone, because then it doesn't sound the same, right? Okay. The only acceptable thought about fear a Christian can have is, I will not fear because God is with me. And that's one thing we really need to grab hold because in the natural, we see nothing. So we take on responsibilities. We feel that those things are ours. We feel that evil people could make decisions that could affect us. You know, there's criminals. You hear about murders and muggings and robberies and rapes. And you hear all about those things in the natural and they happen because evil people make evil choices. So the devil would like to torment you with thoughts that evil people could do harm to you. Evil people could steal your identity. Evil, you know, you see what I'm saying? And that will rob you of the quality of sleep. It'll rob you of your peace. And it, the Lord is very specific. He tells us we are not to fear. He protects us from all the terrors of the night. Psalm 91, read it, okay? Psalm 91. It is, I read it every morning. I decree it and, and proclaim it over my home. And I thank the Lord for every piece of it. So, all right. We don't need to be giving a foothold. And especially there's generational fear. There's natural fears. I don't like being up high. No way. I don't like being up high because there's a natural, there's a natural instinct in us, I think, but I'm not paralyzed to go up a flight of stairs. I'm not, you know what I mean? Unreasonable height. I'm not scared to do certain, there's some things I just won't do. I can't do it, you know, fear wise. I mean, um, height wise, but giving fear its place is fear doesn't come from the Lord. He gives us power, love, and a sound mind. So if you struggle with fear, begin to speak that scripture over them. Lord, you don't give me fear. Fear does not come from you. You give me power, love, and a sound mind. Okay. If you have a problem with fear, with excessive timidity, with cowardice, even with extreme shyness, you will have to work at combating those things and choose instead to have faith. I think there are some things that people accept as their personality when really it's just the devil trying to take advantage of them. And let me pause there for a second. Not to say that an introverted personality is bad or whatever else. There's introverts and extroverts. God, my, I'm married to an introvert. But he is not overly shy. He doesn't lack confidence and filled with insecurity and, and social anxiety, et cetera, et cetera. Those are an extreme and those are not from the Lord. 
Heaven is going to be loaded with people. Okay. You and one other person is all you can handle. That's not from the Lord because heaven's going to be filled. You say, Lord, you got to help me. What wounds do I have or what thing is causing to where I only want to be around one person? I only want to trust one person in my life. You see what I'm saying? You may not. My husband, who's an introvert, has a limit as to how much socializing he can do. And then he has to pull away to refill his tank, you know, so to speak. And I know this. And I let, he pulls away to have some alone time to just recharge himself. I'm not like that. I can be alone for a while and then I have to get out around other people for my tank to be filled. But as I said, he's not timid or shy. And that's what Joyce is talking about here. Introversion, which I think is the, the personality type where shyness can be born. Anything taken in the extreme is not good. God wants us to be balanced. Okay. All right. I hope that made sense. All right. Anyway. There are people who are more naturally bold and some who are more naturally shy than others. But if you are so shy that you can't participate in life and you won't speak your heart or mind, even when you know God is trying to get you to do it, then it's time for you to come against that thing and say, no, that's not the real me. That's not the way God wants me to be. That's not the way he created me to be. And see, that's what I'm talking about is so shy you can't get around people social anxiety to where you just become a hermit in your home agoraphobia that's a fear can't go out in the marketplace fear the marketplace i think is what that's called can't be around other people don't want to be around other people that is an introversion taken to an unhealthy extreme and that is something god did not make us to be that way OK, you need to be able to speak up and engage in life and do certain things. Not that pulling away is um, a bad thing. It's not. Introverts and extroverts need to understand each other. OK, I am um, in 2020, 2021, we had our. Uh, school reunion. It was supposed to be in 2020, but we all know what happened that prevented that. And I just remember realizing at that point just what an extrovert I was in reading how extroverts are charged by people. And I should have been exhausted. There were 300 alumni from my school in the Philippines that doesn't exist anymore. It was on a military base. So we're all really close knit. All the classes from the 60s, 70s and 80s, they were there. And um, not all of them, but, you know, there were groups, people from all those decades. And I remember just feeling more and more and more energized. I just was, I couldn't believe it. You know, and I was one, of, I was on the committee. So we had a lot of work that we were doing at the reunion as well. And it was, I was like, wow. <laughs> I was going until, you know, early in the morning from five until probably midnight, one o'clock in the morning, whether I was working or participating in a dinner or the dancing or whatever it was. And I just seemed to get more and more and more energy, not needing a nap or anything. I was literally, my tank was overflowing. <laughs> now, my husband, uh, it, we were there for four days, three nights and four days, if I'm remembering that correctly. The fourth day, he was done. He didn't even come down for the dinner or anything. He stayed in the room because he was done. He was done socializing, talking, being around people and everything else. And I was, and he was there for part of that day. And I was like, the main event was that night. I go, honey, you're not going to come for the main thing? He said, no, I'm done. I'm done. I said, okay, all right. You know, and I understood that. So it's important to know those personality differences and to not let them be taken to the extreme in either case. All right. From cover to cover, I can show you in God's word that he wants us to be bold and courageous, bold and courageous. He wants us to be confrontational when we need to be confrontational. He wants us to take new ground. He doesn't want us to be afraid of the enemy. 
He wants us to exercise authority and he wants us to do great things in our lives. Be bold and courageous and fear not for God is with you. Okay, you can be bold and courageous and still be an introvert. All right, our trust in him today. As you begin to confront the fears that have kept you in bondage, put your whole trust in God and believe you can do whatever you need to do through him. Whatever it is he's called you to do. He didn't call you to change your personality. He made you exactly the way he wants you to be. For exactly the people you're going to have influence over, exactly your little piece of the world, he made you exactly the way you need to be. Okay, extroverts don't need to put off a, a superior air because we're already bold. That doesn't mean anything. That boldness in the wrong direction is not good. It doesn't glorify God in the least. Okay, I usually have to say, Lord, temper my boldness and those things the enemy would use to make me abrasive or offensive or anything that distracts from what God is trying to do. In either extreme, God wants us to be balanced exactly as we are. And he knows what he intended when he made us. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. Father, we do need to trust you more, to not be fearful, to not hold back, Lord, when you're telling us to step forward. Father, help us search our hearts and show us those things, Lord. Show us those things that we have said, oh, that's just part of my personality as our excuse for not engaging where you want us to engage. Father, I thank you that you love us so much. I thank you that you've given us everything that we need to fulfill the purpose for which you created us. Now help us, Lord, to identify the areas where the enemy is poking those vulnerabilities where he's pushing us to one extreme or the other. We want you to be glorified in our lives. So help us, Lord. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. And thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. Please feel free to leave your comments below. And I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. God bless you and bye until next time.